Debo Samuel is expected to play on Sunday against Jacksonville. He was a full participant in practice Wednesday as he's recovered from that hairline fracture in his shoulder. So that's a good sign for the 49ers that he'll be back out there. However, the team still does not know whether Trent Williams, it's great, Offensive tackle will be out there, was not taking part in practice yesterday, still getting over that high ankle sprain, and still a major question mark for Sunday's game against the Jaguars. Yeah, after a string of losses, it's a breath of fresh air to think about Debo being back. But we'll keep an eye on Williams. As for the 49ers' defense, though, they'll be in for a tough test against Trevor Lawrence, who leads the NFL in QBR against zone coverage. He's completed 77% of his passes with seven touchdowns, just one interception in those situations. The 49ers' defense plays zone at the sixth highest rate in the NFL. But they've struggled during San Francisco's three-game losing streak in which they've allowed nearly seven yards per pass attempt when playing zone. That's the worst mark in the NFL. So we'll dial into a real specific matchup here. And, RC, if San Francisco wants to slow down Lawrence on Sunday, what does the game plan need to look like? Well, I mean, first of all, you have to see what does Chase Young add to this rush. When you look at Minnesota, you also go back to the Cincinnati Bengals, and we had rush from Nick Bosa. We saw a Rick Armstead make some sacks or have two sacks against Joe Burrow, but it hasn't been the sort of pressure we're used to seeing from the San Francisco 49ers in their four-man rush. And so that makes the back end have to cover longer when you're thinking about Traverius Ward, the Amador Lenore on the outside. And they've been, I mean, frankly, just been getting routed up. Jordan Addison had himself mm. a day against both of them, also on the inside with Isaiah Oliver. And then you watch the Cincinnati Bengals exploit them with their three-headed monster at the wide receiver position and really Joe Burrow figuring out who he wanted to throw the football to and taking his pick and so now can that four-man rush become what we've seen it can you start to try to add pressure whether it be by bringing an extra backer or an uh, or nickelback safety into the rush and also on the back end how are they going to start to get Talanoa Hufunga to find a way to make plays and affect this game. Yeah, RC, so listening to Laura talk about those Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. stats, my mind immediately went to, well, it, Jacksonville's going to get into a ton, ton of empty, meaning five offensive linemen, they'll spread San Francisco out, one, because they're good at it, and two, it's a really good way to try and attack San Francisco's defense. The ball gets out quickly, and then they will get into their 13 personnel, that one back, three tight end grouping, just to try to run the football. That's kind of what makes Jacksonville's offense a little unique for me, is their best player is Travis Etienne. That's the way that they feel most comfortable to get him to football. And then there's that that empty stuff where, where Travis, or excuse me, Trevor is almost like a catch and throw guy. He doesn't not hold the ball in these situations. Evan Ingram does a really nice job of work in the middle of the field. So if they're going to see that much zone, Doug Peterson and Press Taylor, their offensive coordinator, is going to spread them out, get it out mm -hmm. quickly, and then they will see that, that heavy dose run game. Yeah, the Jaguars have the longest active win streak in the NFL. They've won five straight, but they are the three-point underdog in this game, sure. despite the losing streak that the 49ers have been on. All right.